Cypress Development Corp is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at talkdigitalnetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sean Broderick, Senior Editor at WeissRatings.com. Welcome back to the show, Sean. Thanks very much for having me on. Sean, uh, a shocker in the petroleum world yesterday where negative price is $38 below zero. How is that possible? What does that mean? And uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. How can something be worth less than what it costs to take out of the ground? Well, because they simply have no place to store it. So they would be basically paying people to take the oil now. It's not the oil producers that were doing that unless they were trading in the futures market. What we found was a lot of speculators caught upside down um, in oil and uh, coming to the last day of the contract, and they would have to take delivery. <laughs> and so, um, so basically they're paying to get rid of that obligation, right? And so uh, that's just a short-term thing. Now, we have seen... Um, Tuesday is the last day of, uh, the, uh, of the, um, of like that futures contract, okay, of the May futures contract. And so then the next contract is, um, June and, but that's also fallen a lot too. It's not negative, certainly. It's, it was down around what, 20 bucks? So, um, so, um, what this shows is that not so much demand is going down, but demand is evaporating. And that's simply because of the stringent, or not so stringent, measures people have taken to deal with the coronavirus. So I think what people have to think about is, will things get worse before they get better? I think they will. Um, I think what we've gotten is a lot of happy talk from people in power, but if they do open things back up, people are going to start getting sick again at a much faster rate. We'll have a wave, too. I expect them to do that, so I expect a second wave. And the second wave is going to be probably more terrifying than the first wave because people thought they were done with this junk. But here you go. You know, there you go. You're going to have to deal with it again. And so how will that second wave go? I've done lots of reading on the 1918 flu pandemic, and it's, it's not the same. Certainly... The country has changed and um, really whole societies have changed and all that stuff. But there are some real similarities. One is that, um, well, back then, uh, back then, San Francisco was really one of the most hardest hit of all the cities in North America, more than New York. This time around, it's New York. Back then, it was San Francisco. And they had a first wave, and everyone complied. And then they started to ease things up, and people started to get sick again. And so uh, they uh, said, well, we're going to have to impose these things again. So they made it voluntary, and no one complied. There was, in fact, an anti-mask league, people marching in the streets, not wearing masks, saying, this is stupid, we don't want to have to do this anymore. So it just made things so much worse the second time around that they finally clamped down and said, that's it. Go home. Wear your mask when you do have to go out. We are done. And so that's what finally cured it. And so we could be looking at something like that for this. We finally have testing, not nearly enough in the U.S. I believe you guys are doing okay up in Canada. But we don't have the vaccine yet. And the vaccine is going to take months. Oxford is ready to start testing its vaccine. There are other vaccines in the works. But until we get that vaccine, it's just going to be a very, very difficult situation. So I expect this to stretch on and on. And I know people are now 
selling the companies that profit from the pandemic. In fact, my subscribers took games on um, Avid Labs. We took two rounds of auction games, and we sold half of the uh, stock holding itself that we had on Tuesday uh, just because I can see the way that the short-term trend is going. But I think that short-term trend down is going to bottom, and then it's going to be time to load up on those stocks again because this is not over. This is not over by a long shot. And the same people who are telling you it's over were telling you that it was nothing to worry about, not only when it started, but for weeks afterwards when it was very obvious there was a problem. Do not listen to those people. They do not have your best interests in mind. They are definitely trying to put forward a political agenda, which is not going to help you. So keep that in mind. If you were trying to take advantage of it, would you be uh, buying things like 3M, who make the uh, technical masks, or companies that make ventilators, or pharmaceutical well, companies um, that make you know, vaccines or possible cures? Yeah. We've done very well with the pharmaceuticals. We did well with Abbott Labs. We are doing well with Gilead. Uh, those are nice. Um, we also have Lakeland Industries, for example, which makes um, masks and all the garb you wear in the hospital and stuff. They have a new factory in Vietnam and stuff, so they're just cranking up. In the last quarter, which was just reported recently, the profits were up over 600%, and and uh, the pandemic just started. Imagine what's happening with Lakeland Industries now. There's a bunch of plays like that. Also look at the um, those things that allow people to work from home. You know, I mean... Uh, Certainly Zoom is one, though it always seems to be stuffed with wind, and I'm always afraid to buy it. But also things like Citrix Systems, stuff like that, those are other ways to play this. And they don't have anything to do with the drug, but as our society is being reshaped, as how we work, as how we interact is being reshaped, these technological companies are going to do very well because they make those things much easier. Uh, what about streaming services? I hear some people already have burned through just about every available show on Netflix, so they're trying to find somebody else to watch. Well, I can give them a list of shows they should watch. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah, you know, Netflix is a good choice. I mean, uh, they had to slow down their their they had to slow down their data speed over in Europe because so many people are using Netflix that it was clogging the internet over there. That, um, you know, that's going to zigzag around. It's going to do all sorts of things. Disney, I think, is a good choice there. And many people are saying stay away from Disney because because all the parks had to close. Well, yeah, the parks closed temporarily, but they aren't going anywhere. In the meantime, Disney Plus is doing great. AT&T might even have an angle on this. And they pay a nice dividend. They're one that I have on my watch list. I haven't bought them yet. So there are ways to play this in the streaming services. Yeah, I think uh, those really are good. A lot of people, I think, are going to find the like that that they like staying home. I'm not saying they won't go out anymore. And in fact, I'm sure when the quarantine is lifted, pretty much everyone's going to go out, and go running down the streets, hugging everybody, simply to get that human contact again. But a lot of people will be adjusting their lives and saying, you know what, uh, we were actually saving money and doing okay, hanging out inside. One more thing that we have to keep in mind is that um, we are probably headed into a major recession. And so at some point, people will give up Netflix, but uh, I'm not sure what that point of pain is. Because right now, the rich people are doing extremely well. In fact, they're not going out, so they're not spending money, right? So they're actually saving money in this. The upper middle class is doing well because they're also not going out, not spending money that way, that kind of thing. But those people that live paycheck to paycheck are not doing well at all. And this is a major hardship on them, and we have to keep that in our thoughts at all times. I mean, not only uh, do we feel sorry for these people, but also, I mean, this is going to be a major change to how the North American economy works, that these people are hit so hard. And they are getting uh, the help from, like, Washington that they should be. I know up in up in Canada, you folks seem to have it worked out. Uh, good for the, good for the, 
um, excuse me, good for the Trudeau government that they actually got the payments moving on and like stuff like that. But there's so many problems down here in the U.S. Not just because we're a larger com- because we're a larger country too. It's just being bungled, which is pretty much um, that's pretty much the word to describe our response to everything on a federal level when it comes to this virus. So people say, well, things will get better, and I'm there, yeah, eventually. But in the meantime, remember, we have a bunch of bunglers in charge. So anything that can go wrong is likely to go wrong. Yeah, I heard that uh, the aid that was supposed to go to small businesses was snapped up by all the chain restaurants. Right, and you know what? I think that was done deliberately. I think that their fat cat friends in the Senate who actually change that part of the law so so the big companies could get it. Fat cat friends in the Senate knew that would happen because they only care about their rich contributors. They don't care about regular folks. And that's really a shame for America, but that's how things are now. We'll have more with Sean Broderick right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. Sean, how's gold reacting so far? Well, gold had a great month. It is pulling back now. That's not too surprising. One reason it is pulling back is because the U.S. because the U.S. dollar is strengthening. There are other reasons as well, but that's the major one. But people have to remember the reason the U.S. dollar is strengthening is because investors around the world are scared. When they're scared, they run to the dollar. What else do they run to? They tend to run to gold. So the short-term pullback in gold is a buying opportunity. That said, I am taking half gains on some positions, um, just with a mind that I might want to raise some cash to buy other positions. I'm not moving away from the precious metals at all. In fact, I think precious metals, at least the way the year looks now, are going to do very well, very well indeed, in 2020. Uh, platinum, palladium, are they in there? Oh, they're in there. You know, I mean, uh, here's the thing. I mean, palladium really is a, is a metal that's, um, used in the catalytic converters of cars. That's really what it is. I mean, you can kind of talk about it as a precious, as a precious metal, but no one says, honey, I need to buy you a palladium ring. Nobody does. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, um, so, I would consider palladium an industrial metal. It had a terrible day on Tuesday. I I don't think the worst is over for the car manufacturers. I do know that the North American car manufacturers are making 75% cars less cars in April than they made in May, simply because they made a lot of cars in May that they could not sell. Uh, excuse me. In uh, March, 75% less cars in April than they did in March. That's the funny thing about this pandemic. You lose all track of time, right? So, anyway, um, they have made a bunch of cars they can't sell, and for very good reason. I mean, not only are people driving less, right, so <laughs> it's less need for a new car, there's also the fact that we are heading into a recession and people can see it, and it's probably going to be a very serious recession. No one wants to take on a car payment in that kind of thing. So I think the car makers are screwed for a while. I really wish them well. I mean, they tend to be a good way to judge the heartbeat of of the general economy is what's going on with the car makers. And I want them to do well. It's just in the short term anyway, and this could be for months, certainly through the second quarter, probably through the third quarter. Fourth quarter is up in the air, I don't know. But at least through the third quarter, it's going to be tough for the car makers. So they definitely have my sympathy. 
We'll have more with Sean Broderick right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. Sean, uh, we still have to keep the lights on, and for a lot of people, that means atomic power for the power generation stations. How's uranium doing? Well, we have a uranium position in Supercycle Investor. We have Cameco, which I think is, at this point, the only uh, uranium name worth owning. I'd be glad to change my mind. It's just that I find that the other smaller companies tend to be run by diehard optimists. And it's hard to actually make investments when um, when the information that you're getting from the small companies tends to be ultra-positive and not taking any of the bad stuff into account. Uh, so I like Cameco. Like I said, we own it. Um, and uh, I expect that it will go much higher. What, what we are seeing is a bunch of uranium mines shut down around the world. Cameco shut down most of its mines. Um, over in Kazakhstan, they uh, they really shut in a lot of production there. Africa has seen production shut in. And so we are headed toward a good old-fashioned supply-demand squeeze because nuclear power plants don't care, really, about uh, the economy, whether we're in recession or not. They need nuclear fuel because otherwise they will shut down, and restarting them is a lot harder and a lot more expensive than actually keeping them running. So that's what they're going to have to do. And so we have a supply-demand squeeze for years and years and years. The the oh, excuse me, the u- utilities were able to not use long-term contracts. You know, they were just able to buy in the spot market because every single month the uranium in the spot market was cheaper than it was before. Those days are over. And so we are going to see some contracts made. We are going to see some... Uh, just general snapping up of stuff because people have to cover <laughs> the immediate needs they have. So I think uranium, uh, it's moved nicely so far this year, but I think it has a lot higher to move this year, definitely. Marijuana, is anything happening there? Uh, well, we saw a can trust delist from the NYSE yesterday, uh, which was April 20th, when uh, because you and I are talking on the 21st. Um, April 20th was the big, uh, marijuana holiday, 420, uh, and it was 420, 2020. So I'm pretty sure some of the kids I knew in college, um, went into, like, you know, went into weed induced comas yesterday. But, um, really the 420 thing is kind of a public celebration event and we can't have that anymore. So that's really kind of laid on it. One thing that is happening is that in the next relief package, and they're always working on a relief package uh, in, like, Washington right now, the Democrats are speaking about having banking reform for the cannabis industry included in that, you know, just to say, okay, you want to hand out some money, you have to just make it easier for the cannabis companies to handle their money. That would be great if it happens. I don't know if it'll survive the whole reconciliation process as they try and work the two things out, but... That would be a big step for the cannabis industry. And frankly, tax revenues across America are going to be terrible this year. Terrible. And they need all the tax revenue they can get. Cannabis is a good source of tax revenue. So hopefully there'll be a push for that. I'm not holding my breath, though. Right. Uh, thank you, Sean, so much for, <laughs> <laughs> for chatting with us. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. Thanks. My guest has been Sean Broderick. Senior Editor at WeissRatings.com. If you have any questions for Sean or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. 
We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.